And on the phone with me, we've got Glenn Campbell. And I'll tell you what, Glenn, you are a, a, a musical hero of mine. Ah, well, thank you, Bob. And I followed your career for many years, and uh, I can't wait to see you. You're coming to town soon. It's going to be a great show. I can promise people that. Now, let me ask you this. You were born in Arkansas. Right. And what was it like growing up at the, in the South that during that period? Uh, well, I grew up in the river bottoms, the Ozan River Bottoms, they're called, in Arkansas. Kind of swampy area, you know, on the Little Missouri River. And it was very little, too. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> that's, that's where I grew up with no electricity. We didn't have any electricity. We had to watch TV by candlelight. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't have any, we didn't have electricity when I grew up. That was a big deal, boy. It, was it a poor town? Oh, well, it, daylight was, you know, it's, it, it's daylight on one side of the post and daylight on the other side of the post. <laughs> it just had one little store in it, you know. How many family members did you have? I had a, my, mom and dad had eight boys and four girls and raised us on a, on a sharecropper's salary, which ain't a lot. As I say, you work for your supper, and for your breakfast, and for your dinner. Now, how did you become interested in music? Well, I got tired of uh, looking at the north end of a southbound mule. I started, I headed west. What was that? Roger Miller said, Horace Greeley said, go west, young man, and right. 100 people in Seattle drown. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just I, I I wanted to go to California, really, but I had to. I, I did about five, maybe four to four years, four and a half years in Albuquerque, mm-hmm. working in a band there. We had a radio show five days a week, and it was because they were called the Sandia Mountain Boys. You started. You started actually very young uh, in music with your uncle, I believe. Yeah, they, that was him in Albuquerque. My, he was married to my uh, my dad's sister, he, so he was he he was in, run into the family. It's uh, I was like I think I was about fifteen and a half, sixteen years old. Mm-hmm. So you, it's been your whole life basically. And did you start uh, with the guitar, uh, or or was there a particular instrument that you started? Well, I know a lot of people start on one and then kind of yeah. switch to another. Well, I started on the mandolin because I couldn't uh, I couldn't reach around for the daddy had they had an old uh, ma- a pumpkin back mandolin. It was it was small enough for me to play. I couldn't re- I couldn't hardly reach a guitar by then. I, w- I must have been you know four or five years old somewhere along in there. Uh, were your parents supportive of your uh, musical career? Oh yeah, are you kidding? Well, they didn't want me to leave Arkansas. So, you know, <laughs> I said, there ain't nothing here that I want to really hang my hat on right now. Yeah, the musical scene in a uh, small town in Arkansas probably wasn't real hot. Uh, That's wasn't right. Hopping, all, you, you know? all you can do, they want you to play musicals and they don't pay you anything. Right. So you began touring with this, uh, it was cu- it was a country group uh, called, the, what was it, the Rang- something, the Wranglers? Western Wranglers. Western Wranglers. And you- right. I, I was a... Uh, the band I had, boy, Glenn yeah. Campbell and the Western Wranglers. <laughs> <laughs> we played we played clubs basically. We'd play Hitchin Post and then go over to the other end of town, and play the place uh, Chesterfield Club, and it was just. And then somebody come up and said, "Hey, I'm going to California," and I said, "I want to go with you." And uh, a friend of mine had moved out there, and and he had a job at a uh, songwriting uh, 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 that gamut. We were songwriting for a publishing company, and uh, we start, started making uh, demos. Jimmy Bowen is who it was. Uh, you know, the guy that produced. Everybody in Nashville did. Right. And uh, he produced Frank Sinatra. Wow. Dean Martin. He was incredible. Jimmy so, Bowen. Wow. So it must have been a life for a, for a young teenager. Oh, it was, man. I was out on my own. I didn't have to answer to nobody but myself, <laughs> basically. My Aunt Judy, they lived out there. And I'd play in his band for, for a while. He had a good band, too. And, you know, I didn't know this about you, but you were in the Champs with uh, yeah. Tequila. Right. The, that was basically a studio band that did tequila. Well, what the, what, what the guy's name is, I can't remember that now. But it was, uh, yeah, I went out as a champ. and it, it was Seals and Crofts and myself and a guy named Bob Morris. And we were the champs going out on those, uh, you know, the, the tours, the big gang tours. We had right. Jack Scott, Danny the Juniors, and the champ. We rode a bus <laughs> from New York. <laughs> Man, to Pocatana, Idaho. It was uh, it was just probably, it was long. It was probably billed as here's a medley of our hit. You're right. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah. dun, 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 dun. How many I versions? Got, I couldn't stand tequila after that. <laughs> yeah, <even>. Right. <laughs> Later on, you became a very sought after session musician. Yeah, that was uh, well. I could use a capo. That means you can clamp it off all the way up the neck and. and plays E, C, G, all the open positions in any any key. And that's why I got to play so many records, because they was looking for that, you know, the Righteous Brothers sound, mm-hmm. you know, a Beach Boy sound, Janet Dean sound. It was just a rhythm guitar thing that was my, my whole spiel, and I got to play on uh, all those people's sessions, and it was just uh, just great guys, and, and the best musicians, literally. I got to work there for about three or four, four or five years with the best musicians 
you know, in the world. Right. I mean, you did work with for Elvis, Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. I know uh, you did some monkeys tunes, uh, yeah, Mamas and the Papas, Dean Martin and, was fun. and whatnot. And, and what are some of the songs that people would be surprised that you played on that they would never would have known that you played oh, on? Everybody loves somebody sometimes. <laughs> and oh, how about this one? Bring back those lazy, hazy, hazy crazy, crazy days, days of, of summer. Hey, who was that? <laughs> that was Nat King Cole. That was Nat King Cole. Right. right. Right on. I, got that. It was just, I was the only guy that knew how that was in the in that clique of session players that knew how to use a capo. Which, like you, like I said, you can play in any key. Right. That's why I got. That's why I got so many sessions. That's well. what they were looking for. And they still are. That's still the rule today. People, I'm sure people know this about you, but you became a uh, basically a touring member of the Beach Boys. Right. And how did you get involved with the Beach Boys? Just through session work? Through the session work, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian, as he he wanted to just stick his feet under the piano with in the sandbox and write the Pet Sounds album, and uh, we would go out on the road, and then when we'd get back into town, we would uh, do whatever Brian had for us to do. You know, but it, as was based, it was the same musicians though. Like I said, it, it wasn't the Beach Boys band. That it, it was the same musicians that played all my records and later on, and <laughs> it, it was just. Brian had all of them in the studio, and basically, uh, Carl came in and he did guitar solos uh, dubbed in, but the rhythm section and everything else was the wrecking crew. All the girls with the Beach Boys, huh? Dennis, Dennis, oh, <laughs> Dennis was the sex symbol. It's amazing. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that. Freeman, you know, oh my goodness, they were just. <laughs> and he just. It was fun. From what I read about Dennis, that was pretty much his thing, anyhow. You know, he he was just to pick up the women and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of people get into music for, actually. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I didn't at the time. I was married at the time, so I was I was playing a straight and narrow. In the early 60s, you released some solo stuff, but it didn't really catch on. And then in 1967, Gentle on My Mind come out, and it just exploded for you. Yeah, it did. And the things went crazy. And you didn't sing a whole lot on your earlier recordings. Uh, I, I had a... I had instrumental stuff out, too. Yeah, because I have a few of those albums. Oh, do you? Now, uh, did you continue uh, continue doing session work after the uh, whole thing took off? Oh, yeah. And you probably still do it to this day. I Guys do. Hey, hey, come around. We're going to do this and that and that and that. But I live out in Malibu now. (laughs) Well, you'll have to pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> but you had uh, you had a magical formula with Jimmy Webb. I mean, Jimmy Webb oh. songs were, were your yeah. bread and butter for a while. Jimmy and I are going to work on an album when I get my studio done. We're getting a studio, so we don't have to blow you know seven hundred dollars an hour. And we can set up in our own studio and pay for it in a year and a half. You know. But did you have a lot of fun when it took off for you? It was a big whirlwind thing, man. Everybody and his dog, you know, and, and promotion. And when you go on promotion gigs, you don't get paid. And I told him, I said, you know, I'll, I'll do phoners, but, you know, but to go to Des Moines uh, for a rally of some kind, you right. not get paid for it, no. I, I, I said, you know, I'd rather sit here and play on, on the sessions because I can go sleep in my own bed every night. The news guy here just walked in a little bit ago, and he told me that you actually played the Huntington County Fair, which is near here, in about 67 or 68, and he said, ask him if he remembers that. And I was like, well, I'm sure he doesn't, but... uh, (laughs) That was a long time ago. (laughs) (laughs) I played a lot of fairs, a lot of outdoor things, yeah. And I did read about you. There's a town near here called Glen Campbell. Yeah. Believe it or not, and you visited it in 1970, just a small town. Yeah, I know it. Isn't that (laughs) Pennsylvania? Yeah. Glen Campbell, Pennsylvania. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They probably named it after me after the show. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. That's what I always thought, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, see, I was that's a, that's a, that's an old old house, old place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Town. So they're they are actually in our listening area. So many of them well, may they? hear that. Yeah. Well, so. I'd like to say hi to everybody in Glen Campbell. <laughs> From Glen Campbell. From Glen Campbell to Glen Campbell. Now, having all these hits uh, landed you a bunch of spots on uh, variety programs, yeah, which led to having your own show, and and it's an interesting story about how uh, your show came to be. Yeah, it it really was. Uh, Tommy saw me on the Joy Bishop show, Tommy the late night talk show. Then he called me up because I had played for their sessions, you know, for mm-hmm. one of the student studio work. I was doing studio work then. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Tommy said, "Hey, I didn't know you could." Sing. And I said, well, you never asked me, because, I, I, like I said, all I did was play rhythm and guitar on their stuff. Had come, I went down to audition for them, and they said, yes, right away. We went to Summer Brothers Smother Show in 1968. And, right. I, and I had out, already pressed, already out, already released. I had like four, uh, five albums. Four albums, I think it was. And, of course, we added some to the thing, but it was just, it was maddening. We sold, we sold um, uh, uh, roughly 282,000 records. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just amazing. Wow. I meant millions, excuse me, thousands. 
The it, power of television is amazing. And, and, it's, and it's instantaneous. Yeah. You, you either click with them or you don't. Now, the Glenn, Ta- uh, Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour uh, was on for several years, and you had a lot of great guests just from knowing people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I tried to, get, I tried to mix it up as, as best I could. You know, like have, you know, have, have Ray Charles and, and uh, Willie Nelson on the same show. You know, right. That's a dimension, I think. And, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I would try to do. And because I was, you know, hey, CBS said, you're doing too many country acts. And I said, well, which country do you want me to do then? <laughs> and I think that might have ticked them off a little bit. But they don't know crap from wild honey. Yeah. I mean, these, the executives of, of television. That's why you see some, on television, what do you see now? Reruns from 20 years ago. Highway Man. I couldn't get it released on Capitol Records. I had it all done. I had the album done. And he said, "No, we." He said, "We don't think that's that's your kind of music." I said, yeah, that was a kill for that song, in which I had it recorded at Cap. And that's the same one that I took it to Nashville with the Jimmy Bowen, a friend of mine. That Turkey. He got Chris Dawson and Johnny K- and those guys to do it. <laughs> and it worked out oh, for them. Oh, I told the guy at Capitol Records, I, I was nasty with him. That's you wouldn't incredible. know a hit song that jumped up and slapped you right in the face. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, this whole the the, the good time hour timeline. Life's released a DVD set. Oh called, yeah, called the Glenn Campbell Good Times again. And it's yes, it, they are. I, I have so much fun watching those. It's just you know you're going back in from, from 1968. It's just wow. You know, hey hey, we're the monkeys. It, they're even on it. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you enjoy doing the show at that time? Because I, I, I imagine yeah. it was very demanding of your time and whatnot. Oh really? That's that. I, did, I really enjoyed doing the show. Mm-hmm. The writers were funny. It, the whole show was just a click because we had a great band. Uh, we could do anything. Best musicians in the world playing, you know, and it's just, I really enjoyed it. The other night, the tape, the Good Time Hour off of the, they ran it on CMT, I believe was the channel yeah. at the time. Uh, I just watched one the other night. It was, uh, Don Ho was on there. Had oh, a yeah. big guy. <laughs> I'm glad he did the show. He told me, he said, Glenn, here's one of those Jimmy Webb songs you like so much. He said, I recorded it and it doesn't happen with it. And it was, uh, oh, Galveston. Gal- he did it as a ballad. <laughs> you know, he said, Galveston, oh, God. I said, wow. <laughs> but I, this knocked me out because during the, during the war, and gosh, that, the whole thing about Galveston was, the USS Galveston was a uh, battleship, a middle, mess, missile cruising battleship, and the Wichita, USS Wichita, was a su- supply ship. And they'd meet out in the middle of Gulf of Tonkin, and naturally, Galveston's playing Galveston, and Wichita... <laughs> playing Wichita linemen. <laughs> he said, it's a wonder. I got more letters from those guys because I mentioned it on the on the TV show. Uh, rumor has it that John Wayne requested you to co-star with him in True Grit. Yeah. Wasn't that something? That's amazing. Is it from watching the show? His, his daughter really loved the Good Time Hour for some reason. I guess it was all the girls dancing and, you know, it was an entertaining show for kids and grown-ups alike. And, yeah, she wanted to meet Glenn Campbell. I said, Wow. <laughs> Here's John Wayne come out there. He was really a dude boy. Did you ever aspire to be an actor? No. But I did a couple of movies like that, but I never... It You sit around, you know, Yeah. and you say two lines, and you sit around a while till they readjust it, and then you sit around a while, and I said, this is the most boring thing I've ever done. <laughs> I want to sing the song and get off of the stage, play golf. <laughs> what was it like to work with John Wayne? Oh, he was incredible. He was. I would look around and see if the camera was really on. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell when the cameras were on and off by listening to him talk and listening to him say what he was saying because he was constantly running his lines because he didn't want to. He didn't want to. So he would he would mold into the character and basically stay in character is what you're yes, saying. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he was he was just amazing. So he lived the part. No. Oh yeah, all those old westerns and all the war movies he made were just. So good. Now, in the 70s, the hits kept coming, like Rhinestone, Cowboy, Southern yeah. Nights. Now, was there ever a time, after all, the whirlwind kind of died down a little bit? Is there ever a time you just wanted to kick back and just kind of get out of the business for a while? Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, like, I, I quit for a while. I had I had quit uh, for a while. I, I disbanded, uh, moved to Phoenix, Arizona for 20-something years, and I loved it down there. We're back in California now because our daughter wanted to go to Pepperdine. Yeah, I, lo- I loved it. I was off for a while. So we, we cranked up. I was off for about a year, I guess. Maybe maybe longer. I wasn't off. I was always going around and doing something. You know? Right, but it was kind of a slow pace. Yes, yeah. exactly. It wasn't. How many albums did you record? <laughs> I don't know. How many I... albums I record, hon? She said, too many to count. <laughs> <laughs> How would you define your sound? Uh, just a singer of songs. Uh, and I would I would 
put on it musically what I thought fit the fit the tune. Like Wichita Lineman, I think, is by Jimmy Webb. I think those things are masterpieces. In fact, uh, we went back to 2000 in New York City for the in it was for some Millennium song thing, and and Jimmy Webb won the most played song of the Millennium, which was Wichita Lineman. And that's the most played ever on radio. Isn't that something? Yeah. It wasn't my. It wasn't just my record of it because there had been some instrumentals released on it and some and people some people that had it in albums. But it, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah, song. Yeah. Love that best, song. Best melody I believe of in show business. <laughs> okay, now you worked. Uh, you worked with my buddy Andy Williams in Branson for a few years, and uh, did you enjoy that instead of touring? Basically, the people coming to you instead of you oh, going yeah. to them. Cause oh I, yeah, it was a lot better. Because I know that's why he went down there because it's like, well, they just come to me. Yeah, it's. I think. Branson's going to be. It's a pretty. It'll. It's always going to be there because they got the parks and they got the. And actually, the music. But I think that they overdid it for a while. They, they they didn't have enough people. Now, are you going to go back there with more shows with Andy? I would doubt it. Okay. But if he wants me to, I would. But I. But I'm. I'm not, I don't really want to call up and say I'd like to play with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You... I want. I want. I want to quit. I want to. You know. Just take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I must tell people that uh, I did see you a few times in Branson, and you put on a heck of a show. It is a fantastic show. So if somebody wants to see you live, I'm telling you what, it, it, you don't want to miss it. Well, you do a you. great, great job. Now let's talk about the upcoming show at the Jaffa Mosque coming up on December 2nd. What will people see when they come to this show? They'll see Glenn Campbell in his, probably my cowboy outfit, but no hat. <laughs> I'm not a hat guy. I just wear my jeans and shirt and a loud western cowboy shirt. And it's kind of a Christmas show, and it's kind of a regular show, yeah. kind of mixed together. Yes. So you're going to be doing some of the stuff that people know and Christmas hits and stuff like that. So, if people want to get information about Glenn Campbell, they can go to glencampbellshow.com. Yeah. And, Glenn, I thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Today. My pleasure. And I wish we didn't have somebody else coming on the phone. I'd yeah. talk longer. So <laughs> I'll see you uh, on the 2nd. Okie dokie. 2nd of December. Okay, babe.